Hello everyone, today we're gonna to use OpenAI's ChatGPT to attempt to create a Python trading strategy. Now, for those of you that don't know, my name's Leo, I'm an actual algorithmic trader. So the point of this video is you're gonna to get to walk alongside me as I see the ChatGPT responses and I'll comment as an actual professional trader and see if it just pumps out lame, you know, golden uh, cross <laughs> moving average trading strategies. All right, let's see what we get here. So. First things first, uh, can you create trading strategies? All right, let's see what it says. Yes, I can certainly help you with trading strategies. So uh, ChatGPT, I believe, is trained on Wikipedia and GitHub, if I'm not mistaken. I haven't really dived too much into it. I'm gonna actually start diving more into it because it's you know the new hot thing and there's things that we could do to uh, potentially do sentiment analysis and stuff like that. But let's go ahead and go back to the prompt here. Okay, some prefer to start off by a set of technical or fundamental analysis tools that will use to guide their trades. Others may prefer beginning to find their risk tolerance. Okay, I'm gonna tell you that this is a fine answer, but the real truth is you need a market philosophy. If you don't have a market philosophy where do you you know believe fundamentals drive the market, emotions drive the market, uh, you know, psychology, you know, the Fed drives the market. If you don't have an underlying philosophy of what moves the market, you need to get one, right? Because what will happen is you start trading, things will go against you. You need to have those core root beliefs to be able to stick with your trading systems and understand why things work, right? Uh, so anyways, okay, fine. An okay answer, something I'd expect to be uh, on Wikipedia. How about we ask it, give us the components of a trading system. Here I'm looking for it to respond with like a, a data model, alpha model, risk models, uh, reporting management, things like that. So give me the components of a trading system. Okay, let's see what it says. The trading system is a set of rules or guidelines that traders use to make decisions when a buy and sell financial instruments. The components of a trading system can vary depending upon the specific approach and goals of the trader, but some common elements of a trading system include market selection, Yes, that's important. Um, you know, different markets have different properties. Uh, some are more mean reverting and some are more trending. Um, you know, that's one of the reasons why, uh, you know, all of this knowledge passed down from trader to trader, sometimes incorrect, is because you can't apply them over various markets. Entry rules, exit rules, position sizing. Uh, you know, not really what, uh, well, risk management. Okay, what else does it say? I'm not so sure I'm happy with this answer. Oh, you know what, of a trading system. You know what, I think I made the mistake here. Um, it should be an algorithmic trading system, right? Because I just asked for a trading system. My mind is so used to algorithmic trading systems um, that uh, I think I made the mistake. Um, please give me the components of an algo algorithmic trading system. All right, so in regards to a regular trading system, yes, I would argue that coming up with um, <laughs> trading systems to generate profits is a lot easier than this one right here, psychological management. This is one of the reasons why I got actually into, uh, well, I love tech and computers, but one of the reasons why I got into algorithmic trading was uh, to conquer that and uh, uh, e execution, right? All right. Yes, I understand this. Okay, trading strategy, that's fine. That's, I will call that the alpha strategy. Data inputs, uh, data model. Execution logic, sure, uh, that you'd want an execution model. That's when you, you know, decide, you know, basic things like how you buy it. Do you buy it in chunks? Do you buy it over time? Uh, you know, so that's VWAP or TWAP, things like that, very basic. Risk management, maximum amount of capital performance evaluation. Okay, so wouldn't necessarily be the way that I'd phrase it, but these are good answers. Um, so, so far, uh, from a, you know, from my perspective, if I was a new trader, this would be uh, pretty fantastic, right? It's giving good answers, um, maybe not extremely nuanced answers, and obviously that comes with experience, but pretty good answers uh, for a beginner. Okay. All right, give... Give me some examples of an underlying trading strategy then. 
right? Because it says, you know, only as good as the underlying training strategy. There are many different underlying training strategies that can be used, trend following, uh, buys financial instruments that are rising, mean reversion, mm -hmm. arbitrage, news-based. Okay, again, very good general information, um, machine learning, yep. Okay. Yeah, there's typically, those would be the ones that I'd classify as the primary. So you're either, you know, these are traditional trend following mean reversion arbitrage is typically using computers, news based, you can do that, you, you sort of still need, you know, you can still do that based, uh, you know, discretionary, right? Uh, after trainings announcements, you have to be really quick, though. And machine learning, essentially, you're actually tackling the thing in reverse instead of having a market philosophy and trading uh, based on that. Um, you're actually trying to find uh, patterns in the data and reverse uh, engineering that without actually an understanding of why they work. That'd be like Jim Simons and Renaissance uh, Capital Management uh, using machine learning and all of that. So, okay, so far so good. So let's see if it can give us a very basic trend following system in Python. Give me a basic trend following system in Python using uh, Tesla's stock as an example. Here's a simple example of a trend following system. Okay, we're importing pandas. Where do we get the data? Tesla CSV. Uh, we'll see if we can actually import that automatically from my finance. But let's see, the moving average rolling window size mean. Where's, uh, yep, it's up there. Trade size by 100 each trade, zero shares, cash. Okay, so it's just gonna iterate through and buy after, let's see here. So what it's doing is just iterating through each row, which is each day, I would assume if that's daily, um, so, you know, saying the trade size is the shares, that's 100 shares, how much cash do we have, initial capital, trade size times row close. Okay, where's the cash? Yep, so, okay, so that seems like, it seems interesting. Um, and then what we do is the current price is below the moving average to so sell the shares, that makes sense. Okay, and then print the pr uh, portfolio value. Okay, so let's, instead of using, um, you know, the CSV, let's see if we can say, let's use Y Finance instead, and then we'll actually put it into uh, Jupyter Notebook and see if it works. All right, so uh, give me, um, use Y Finance in the above instead of a CSV file. Here's an example of how you modify the trend following system to use Y Finance, import pandas, import Y Finance, ticker Tesla, period max. Interesting. So, so far, so good. Let's actually test this in, uh, and, uh, in uh, Jupyter Notebook, which is just you know a web-based uh, way of sharing Python code and see what some of these uh, inputs and outputs look like, right? once this is done. So my initial take so far is if you're a new trader, um, if you're a discretionary trader and you're interested in getting into algorithmic trading, this is fantastic. Um, I don't, we'll see later if it can exploit like um, post earnings announcement drift and other anomalies that you know are proven to work. Um, momentum is one. Momentum is actually a very strong <laughs> uh, anomaly. But anyways, I'm digressing. Let's just copy this. We'll put it in here. Untitled. Okay, let's just first see if we have those. We'll import, get our imports. We do have it in our Python virtual environment. All right, let's grab the data so you can see what that data looks like. So we see open, high, low, close, volume, dividend, stock splits. I don't know, even though I've created a video on how to use <laughs> why finance, I use uh, Polygon and uh, so I don't actually use Y Finance. I don't know if this is the adjusted close that incorporates uh, dividends and other corporate actions like splits, but you need to make sure whenever you are back testing that this is an adjusted close and not a close. Otherwise, when the price drops 50% due to split, the algorithm actually thinks that you've 
uh, lost half your capital or, uh, you know, had a great short, which indeed it's actually uh, nothing of the sort. All right, so then we've got window size, roll uh, MA. So all we're doing here is we're creating a moving average of the close. We'll see a bunch of NANs until we get to this window size of 50. So um, you know, on here on the 50th row, we'll get um, you know data here and we can see it's a moving average right here of the close. <clears throat> okay, so far so good. We'll set the initial capital to 10,000, trade size is 100. Um, set the number of shares up by uh, initial capital is cash. So that's uh, interesting here. So obviously 100, so here's, here's what I'm looking at right now, right? So it's 173, why is that moving average 173? It must've had a big drop. Interesting. You'd have to, I'd, I'd actually take a look and check here. Uh, 2022, yeah, it had a big drop. Where 2022 has been crazy. So I was looking at the data, and this is, I guess, just one of those things after you've been looking at it for a while <laughs> to look and see if the numbers look normal. I see that the close is down here and the moving average is way up here. And I'm like, whoa, that's a pretty big drop. And then obviously, uh, lately, uh, with all, you know, Tesla has been dropping significantly. So I'll assume that that's correct. All right, so let's see, 110 uh, times 100. Obviously, we know uh, the reason why I was showing you this is <laughs> uh, simply because this is 11,000 and this is 10,000. So we'll see, we're not going to actually be able to purchase that initial trade size. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. So cash is the initial capital is cash. So we've got 10,000. Uh, for index row, it arose if the row closes above the row EMA. So if the close price is above the MA and shares is zero, shares equal trade size. So somehow we're going to buy 100. So shares is 100, cash minus trade size, which would be 100 times row. So, um, okay, so let's just do this before we print the portfolio value. I'll run this. And then here's what I was talking about. Cash. I would, I'd be curious, uh, this, uh, you know, if we can go above and below balances, obviously if the trade size is this much, uh, so we're saying the initial capital is 10,000, but we're trading this many shares each time. Let's see what happens here. So there's clearly uh, a bug in this code where it doesn't actually check to see if you have the ability to purchase that much capital. But for the most part, so far, you know, as a beginner, that's pretty interesting. Um, so what else could we do? Um, give me, well, we can't do that with Python because you likely don't have the, uh, let's see here. Give, uh, give me a, Give me, what do you want? Give me the Python code to exploit uh, the PED, Post Earnings Announcement Drift Anomaly, uh, where we will buy immediately at the open after the first, uh, after a close above the first five minute bar. Um, see here selling selling when a price moves below the 20 day moving average and i didn't say python uh oh it doesn't like exploit exploit the pet anomaly uh content but it still gave it to me anyways let's see what happens here so if you're not familiar let me just go to my website analyzing alpha So this is uh, episodic pivot. This is a trade setup where um, you know there's been many of traders that have turned thousands of dollars into millions of dollars exploiting this anomaly, uh, and it's based on the post earnings announcement drift where um, humans underreact to um, good information uh, typically. And essentially what you find is when a company has a really good uh, earnings announcement, uh, the price 
uh, continues to move in that direction. I've detailed how to do that and some of the traders who were successful at making loads of money off it on this blog post if you're interested. But anyways, let's get back. Let's see here. What did I do? So we have Tesla. Okay, shift, five minute bar. Well, where is the five minute bar? Open iLock. So we don't actually have the data for that. So it looks like it gives us example code, but it doesn't give us exactly what we need. Um, hmm, how else could I use this? Give me uh, the rationale why the head normally works in stocks. Let's see, is there a phenomenon in the stock market? Okay. Yep, so it tends to underreact to new information, especially when it's unexpected. Yeah. So this is interesting. So here's, here's my initial take. Um, I think this is phenomenal for beginners. I think it's exactly sort of what I had expected it to be from a language model, right? It's trained on Wikipedia and GitHub. So it understands, you know, the basic stuff. Um, it's also interesting because it can give you, uh, give me, uh, give me the top five market anomalies. If I could spell A N O M A L Y S. Okay. There are many different market anomalies that are reserved in the financial markets. Consider the top ones, of course. Okay. Let's see. Yep. Market size, value, momentum, quality. It's going to give me all the basic stuff. Momentum, quality. I wonder if it'll add the liquidity. Weekend event, effect, calendar anomaly. Okay. So interesting. So, you know, this could be an interesting way to dig into this, right? Um, let me see if it'll give me the code. Give me, give me this. We don't have the data, but give me the code, the Python code to back test the, uh, the weekend effect. The weekend effect is an effect that it's funny because most companies will tend to report poor news or terrible news over the weekend, right? Uh, if I recall it correctly, um, it's not one that I use in my trading, but uh, essentially, uh, you know, you want to uh, sell on the weekend and buy uh, Monday morning uh, because, again, bad news comes over the weekend. Companies hope that investors forget about it, right? Okay, let's see. Weekday shares. Okay, so it's interesting. So, so far, so good. If you're a new trader, absolutely fantastic. Um, let me go ahead and call it quits on this one. And what I'll do is I'll create the same thing for non-Python traders, only a little bit different in trading view if you're interested in that. So hopefully this was informative. If you think that this is, it, is informative and you want me to create more videos on ChatGPT, please let me know and we can really dive in. Maybe we'll do some type of Twitter sentiment trade analysis or use, uh, you know, earnings announcements, uh, you know, stream, you know, put them through chat GPT and, you know, combine price with sentiment to trade, uh, you know, post earnings. So anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this one and I will see you in the next. Thanks.